after last week's double overtime thriller, Minnesota's become a concerning matchup for the Tar Heels. Even though Carolina's ranked and Minnesota isn't, even though the game's in Chapel Hill rather than being out in the Midwest, it's a single-digit point spread. It's been a popular pick by the Sharps in Vegas. Minnesota, that is. Send me that cash out, fam. However, you shouldn't expect to see the Carolina team that barely squeaked one out a week ago. You should expect the Tar Heels from the opener in Charlotte to return and for Carolina to win the game, and here's why. The Gophers haven't played a team like North Carolina yet. They haven't played an opponent not remotely close to them. Drake May, he's a little better than Matt Rule's quarterback, Jeff Sims, who used to be at Georgia Tech. He's a little better, too, than whoever Eastern Michigan is trotting out at quarterback. This was PJ Fleck, hashtag row the boat himself, speaking about Drake May earlier in the week. Everything. I mean, he's exactly, he's, he's as advertised. He, 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 he's a, uh, I mean, he, he's smooth now. I mean, nothing rattles him. He's a great runner. He's a great athlete. He's very accurate. Uh, he, he can do it all. I mean, that, that's why probably he's the number one quarterback being taken in the draft, they say, coming up. Um, you know, I've, I've only studied him one night, right, a um, little bit in the offseason, but you talk about a really good player. They build the whole scheme around him. Carolina does do that, and Drake May obviously is going to be the key for North Carolina. This is the first road game that Minnesota's played this year. That's not a small thing. They're going into Chapel Hill. It should be a decent environment. And North Carolina is going to be playing pretty motivated ball. They didn't play great last week, and they know it. Mac Brown, he even said it kind of after the game that he sent some complacency with App. They watched the tape of App's opener against Gardner-Webb, expecting that'd be the same team that they see. Oh, look, their quarterback got hurt in his debut. Who's Joe Aguilar? You barely snuck past Gardner-Webb. Oh, we're going to have no problems after college game days at our game, and we won by two touchdowns in Charlotte. And we saw App State nearly win the game because turns out the team that they watched on tape against Gardner-Webb was not the same team that they saw on the field at Chapel Hill. So I suspect the Carolina team we saw a week ago not the same one we're going to see tomorrow. You're going to see a motivated group that's not looking past 2-0 and Minnesota and also a group that's probably going to be a little bit fired up this week based on the statement that the NCAA put out talking about their teammates' mental health passively, talking about their coach as well. There's going to be some motivation from North Carolina, and I think they're going to win the game. Another thing to not overlook with Carolina, they get a lot of attention for quarterback play, and there's this perception that they're this you know finesse type of team. Don't overlook Carolina's physicality. When Carolina lost Phil Longo. One thing that Mac Brown said that was noteworthy is that one thing that we're looking to add with that position that we didn't have when Phil Longo was the OC was a physicality on offense because late in the year it felt like Carolina was being pushed around. And so you bring in a new offensive line coach that's going to really enforce some physicality. You, you bring in Chip Lindsey, who has had some power run type offenses in his background. The first two weeks, Carolina, as good as Drake May's been at points, they've been winning games because of the way they run the ball. Marion, um, uh, Marion Hampton was the best player for Carolina last week, and British Brooks was the best player in a Tar Heel uniform in week one. So while Drake May commands a lot of the attention, it's the physicality of the run game that's been really good for Carolina. And defensively, as much as there have been jokes about how bad they've been at points, they were the story of week one, too, with nine sacks. And then in week two, the way they defended, they made big plays, holding out to a field goal at the end of regulation. Obviously, in double overtime, they came up big, and they held out to under 30 points in regulation. So don't overlook the physicality offensively and defensively for the Tar Heels. North Carolina is going to beat Minnesota by seven, but it might be even more comfortable than that. I've got the Tar Heels 27, Minnesota. 20. I have mad App State fans in my mentions. 
We got to keep it simple. We'll do in just a bit. I think East Carolina is going to pull off the upset of App State. This is my thinking on that. This game tomorrow is the pirate season. Plain and simple. This is their season. They're going to completely empty the bucket in this game. They are 0-2. Falling to 0-3 would be devastating to them. Meanwhile, there might be a slight hint of a hangover effect after App State didn't win in Chapel Hill last week. You want to talk about empty in the bucket. I was on the field when that happened in double overtime or in the fourth quarter. App State was putting it all on the line. They left it all out on the field. Unfortunately, they didn't get the win. That type of stuff can carry over to the next week. And more specifically, more tangibly, when it comes to the health of your team. App State, I was down there. I saw dudes on crutches and guys being iced. And it, there were some broken bodies there for App. And that happens when you play a physical team, a physical power five, when you're in the group of five for Map. So that hurts. And I think the timing, the timing actually helps ECU. If you think that the sample size alone is enough reason to think App State's going to win this game because ECU's 0-2 and, and App State hung in Chapel Hill, I would encourage you not to be deceived by that because they can be deceiving. Early results, small sample size. You might just look at the scoreboard and say, East Carolina lost at home to Marshall 38-13. How do you think they can win on the road at Boone? Well, the details of that game matter. When in the eighth, at the eight-minute mark of the fourth quarter, ECU is actually leading the game 13-10. Their defense was fantastic. And then the wheels just completely fell off. But are we just going to forget like the first three quarters and five minutes, three quarters and seven minutes didn't happen in this game? That ECU was leading in a game they were underdogs in? I think that would be a mistake. A few years ago, I remember taking my wife to uh, an ECU game in Boone and or not in Boone, I beg your pardon, in uh, Greenville. They were playing South Carolina, Shane Beamer's first year there. And the Pirates should have won the game. They threw a pick six in it. There was a kick at the end that South Carolina hit to win it. To win it. ECU should have won the game. The Pirates started 0-2, and, and you have people saying, oh boy, do we have the right coach? Do we have the right quarterback? The Pirates went on to finish 7-5. and five. Two years later, Mike Houston, ECU coach, he has kept the receipts from that and cited 2021 as an example for why you shouldn't write off the Pirates after two games this year. I remember 2021 vividly. Uh, I remember them booing our quarterback off the field in his home stadium. Uh, I remember everybody uh, telling me all week I needed to bench him. I needed to start the backup. Uh, you know, we weren't going to go anywhere if I didn't do that. I remember a lot of similarities. I also know that it was the right decision not to. And that quarterback's playing for the Seahawks now. So I just think everybody needs to, uh, you know, support the, the kids that are on the field and support the players. Yeah, that's a flex. Oh, yeah, well, we went 7-5 and five the rest of that year. That guy, he ended up being a Seahawk. So I know what I'm doing here. I know more than you guys know. I'm in practice every day. ECU's edge tomorrow, though, I think is going to be the running game. Apps struggled against the run the last couple of weeks. Against North Carolina, they got pushed around a bit, and they lost a key run stopper with an ACL injury. I think that's going to hurt. Um, looking at the defense, ECU plays defense. They gave Michigan's offense some problems in the first half of that game. If it wasn't for the offense for ECU giving the ball back a few times, that would have been a more competitive game than I think people would have expected. Raji Harris is back in the backfield for East Carolina. The identity of Pirate football, man, for decades, or like for the last 15 years, has been spread it out, throw the ball over the yard. That's not what this team is. It's run the ball and play defense, calling back to the Skip Holtz days. 